Just from seeing those photos, you might be reminded of the story of the, uh, the 13 boys that got trapped in that cave in the 23rd of June in 2018. I don't remember what I was doing that day, but I remember reading this story and seeing this story very clearly on the news um, of, I don't know how to say his name properly, Sam, some, some Panji and his, and his uh, wild boars teammates. So on the 23rd of June in 2018, it was his 17th birthday and he went with his 11 soccer teammates and their coach, um, the wild boars. They went exploring a cave to celebrate his birthday. Obviously, again, I've not said his name right, but Sompangji and his friends and their coach, they all left their backpacks and their bikes at the, at the front of the cave before descending into its mouth. With nothing more than the torches, the team of 13 excitedly climbed into the cave. It was about 2 p.m. in the afternoon, and they had just had their lunch a little while back, before heading to the cave on their bikes. The cave was dry and wanting to make the most of the daylight, they followed the walls and continued deep into the cave. A few hours later, the rain started and it was difficult for the boys to hear the rain given they were so deep in the cave. Thinking they should probably head home soon, the soccer coach started to leave, lead the boys back the way they had come. They soon found themselves in ankle deep water as the rain outside continued to fall heavily and they soon realised that the water that was pounding down on the mountain needed to go somewhere. The cave continued to fill with water and they could see uh, the way, that the way they had come had become completely flooded. There was no way through. Now rushing to find a way out, they actually went further deeper into the cave uh, thinking maybe there was another entrance. As night fell, the team still had not emerged from the cave. They were expected to be back at Sompangji's house for 5 p.m. for the cake, and it was 6.30, uh, and there was still no sign of them, and their families began to uh, be quite worried. By 8, the birthday cake was still uncut, and the team was still not accounted for. Why weren't they home yet? Where were, where were they? They surely can't be too far away. A few of the dads, uh, they began to search for the team, which obviously still of the rain was quite difficult. They didn't find them at their usual... Uh, places where they hung out. They didn't find them at the place where they stopped for lunch. But then they arrived at the cave and they saw the bikes and the bags which were, which were uh, left out in the rain and untouched for the last six hours. Immediately the fathers realised the situation. The entrance was quite flooded and their stuff was out the front so there was only really one explanation as to what was going on. They raised the alarm and the authorities, uh, when they first arrived, they scanned the area around the cave to see if the boys had met with foul play, but that, uh, there was no sign of that. The authorities went into the cave as deep as they could, but they didn't gain much ground because it was so flooded. And a call was made out for any experienced divers that live nearby to come and evaluate the options um, to see how they could get the boys out. Newspaper articles were published um, about what the expected situation was. Uh, but inside the cave, the wild boars found themselves on a small rocky shelf about four kilometres in, and they didn't really have any sense of time. Their torch batteries were running out. They were locked in darkness. They had no food, so their energy was depleting. They had no water, because they'd left everything outside the cave. Some were drinking the flood water around them, which proved good enough substitute for the time being. You can imagine how scared they would have been. Thirteen people crammed into this small rocky shelf in, deep in a cave, probably watching as the floodwaters rose around them. A scary situation, I'm sure. You can imagine the families would have been scared too. At the start of the situation, it was just a tiny little text box that, it was, uh, that appeared in the newspaper, but the articles would only get larger. Typical. Nathaniel, can you just go to the next slide? The whole world uh, began, began to become invested in the, in the situation. There we go. A full-blown rescue mission was now underway. The local authorities, they, they called in the Thai Navy SEALs, the National Police, and basically every man and his dog who could potentially provide some assistance. They called in international divers from several countries, including Australia, who quickly flew over to help out. Volunteers assisted in setting up a rescue base camp and it was widely accepted that the boys were inside and they needed saving. It continued to rain and the rescue became uh, increasingly difficult. 
No one there really had any idea what to do because it was such a unique situation. When the cave ex experts arrived, they essentially described the situation or the rescue as possible, but highly, highly unlikely. For Australian Richard Harris, that was enough. He said, we are not going to turn our backs on these kids, even if there is only the smallest chance that they could be saved. So they tried to pump out the water from the caves so that the floodwaters would recede. They tried to drill into the mountain from the top and find cracks that the kids maybe could squeeze through. They sent drones to see if there were any other entry points, but none were found. There was one way in and there was one way out. After a week, there was still no sign of the boys. Ropes, which are called dive lines, uh, were fixed to the walls so that they could progress further into the floodwaters with uh, their oxygen tanks and all their scuba gear. The cave was, it was a very dangerous maze of sharp turns. Um, yeah, you can see how, the, how difficult it was to get anywhere near where the boys were. The passages were flooded and the way was narrow and at often times the divers had to take their oxygen, uh, the tanks off their backs because it was so narrow they couldn't get through. Two days later, a British diver, as the British tend to do, they took a wrong turn. And uh, trying to get, he, he was essentially going back the other way, trying to get more oxygen from the front of the cave. He was shining his torch, trying to find his way around, and then suddenly his torch flashed across a group of 13 people, all huddled together. They were deep in the cave in a very small air gap on a tiny little sheltered beach. They were shivering, they were scared, they were cold and hungry. But nonetheless, they had been found. The operation picked up. The location of the boys was known, so the quickest path to their safety could be established. The British diver came back with food and water and blankets and oxygen, which would sustain the team whilst they were being evacuated. And to remove each boy, the divers, uh, two divers would hold an end of the stretcher um, and navigate their way back through to the mouth of the cave. A difficult operation, obviously, with the path being so narrow, you can just imagine how hard this would have been to get the boys out. But one by one, the wild boars emerged from the cave and were quickly attended to by doctors from all over the world. The way of escape was a very difficult one. It took many attempts and it took many people. It was a very large scale mission for the boys to exit the cave alive. There's a lot of similarities between this story and the world today. Let's read some verses from Psalm chapter 40. Psalm chapter 40, and I'll start from verse 1. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. He brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock, and established my goings. And then down to verse 12. For innumer innumerable evils have compassed me about. Mine iniquities have taken hold upon me, so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of my head. Therefore my heart fails me. And then finally, verse 17. But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinks upon me. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tarrying, O my God. So David, the psalmist here, describes in verse 2 a horrible pit. We want to think here that sin is a bit like a horrible pit. It's described as a pit with miry clay, which is essentially like swamp. It's muddy. Uh, you can imagine it was, it was cold. It's like a pit of mud. It's cold. It's wet. It's dirty. It probably stank really bad. And... It's in a pit that is already described as horrible. He goes on to say in verse 12 that he is compassed about by an uncountable number of evils. It's like he's saying that his whole being, his whole life was marked by sin. The word, the word encompassed means to be surrounded like a flood, like, like something is infiltrating into every aspect of your life. David says that the iniquities have taken hold of him. They are more than the number of hairs on his head. If you think of something that's being taken hold of, um, again, you can think of a person that is trapped or stuck. Sin is like a flood that builds up around you and encompasses you. It's like the rising flood waters that the boys, uh, that they would watch as they were stuck on that little rocky shelf. Unfortunately, that is the truth for people in the world today as well. David is not the only one who found himself in a, in a pit of sin, who was surrounded and flooded by his iniquities. Just like the Thailand boys, because of our sin, we are trapped with no way out. The whole world has this issue. Romans 3.23, it's a well-known verse, For all have sinned. Everyone is marked by sin, and none are exempt from it. 
sin traps and floods, and there is nothing you can do. We've already thought about uh, my way. There is nothing you can do on your own merits to escape. There was nothing those boys in the cave could do to escape. I'm sure if there was, they would have tried. They needed rescuing. But both in the story of the cave, the, the cave save mission and the story of your life, rescue is offered. The British diver found them and the rescue team did all they could to bring the boys to safety. Jesus offers us a way out from the cave of our sin. We've thought this morning of the verse that says, But God, who is rich in mercy, as, uh, yeah, again, as we've thought already this morning. Whilst we are surrounded by an incredible amount of sin and we're flooded and trapped, he dives through the dangerous cave systems and searches and finds us and tells us that we can get out and that we'll be safe. The wild boars hadn't eaten anything for two weeks. They had no energy, they needed oxygen, and the divers brought that to them. In John 6:35, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Who, he who comes to me shall never hunger, and he that believes in me shall never thirst. In order to be saved, as Sean's already gone through, you must acknowledge that Jesus offers you this salvation and accept him as a saviour of your life. Can you imagine if those boys in the cave, when they had seen the British diver and realised that they were going to be able to get out of the cave, they said, no, don't worry, we'll, we'll work it out, we'll find our own way out. We think we'll stay here, but thanks for offering. It would have been foolish of them not to accept the rescue from their predicament. It, it would have been foolish of them not to accept that they had a way out. And it would be foolish of you not to accept the rescue from the predicament of sin that Jesus offers. Hebrews 2 verse 3, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? We know how complex of a rescue mission this was and it ended up an international operation to save the boys. The way of escape offered by Jesus is much simpler. Romans 10 says that if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Jesus' death provided a way out of sin. His act of redemption provides a means for us to be brought to safety. Unfortunately, in this rescue, one of the divers passed away uh, with, with health-related issues, and many of the boys still suffer from oxygen-related uh, uh, health ailments today. So the, the rescue was a success in most parts, but it wasn't a complete success. Let's turn to Psalm 103. Psalm 103 and verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives you all your iniquities and heals all thy diseases, who redeems thy life from destruction, who crowns thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Jesus makes us wholly free from sin. We are wholly made and altogether and completely saved from sin, a salvation that is valid once and for all of your life. Have you accepted Jesus' offer of rescue? Our prayer is that you have, and if not, that you will. It's as easy as confessing your position of sin and asking Christ to save you from it. You can be brought out of the miry, swampy pit, brought to life, brought out of the cave, and brought to safety. Safe in the arms of Jesus, safe on his gentle breast, there by his love overshaded, sweetly my soul shall rest. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rescue from, from sin that you offer us, the complete and, and holy uh, salvation from, from our iniquities, Lord. We, we pray that anyone that isn't saved today, that they will come and, and trust you as their saviour and, and, uh, and accept your offer of, of salvation f uh, for their life. In Jesus' name, amen.